Hi, everyone. Um, I am Jin Zhao at Imperial College London. Um, so first of all, uh, I would like to express my sincere apologies for not being there in person. I would like to, well, I would love to be there, but uh, there are some issues with uh, my previous scheduled things. So it's unfortunate this is an online talk, but I hope we can uh, have more discussion if you're interested in this work or related things. Uh, so, so in this work, uh, this work is a joint work with uh, Professor Xiao Yuan and Hui Ping at Peking University, uh, Suguru Ando at NTT Japan, and Patrick Hayden at Stanford, uh, Vladko Vajo at Oxford. Okay, so uh, the basic idea uh, for this work is we propose a per 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 perturbative approach to quantum dynamic simulation, and this approach trying to combine the advantage of conventional perturbation theory and quantum computing. So trying to, it is kind of a hybrid quantum classical approach, but uh, it focuses on dynamical problem and it is not a variational uh, method. So let's begin for the uh, intro introduction. So an interesting uh, application of quantum computing is a uh, quantum many body problem. And we know it's very hard to solve a real quantum many problem because usually uh, for a realistic many body problem it involves many degrees of freedom. So like problems in quantum materials and quantum chemistry. Uh, so we have to make some assumptions to downscale the original problem. And usually we need to use a toy model to capture the main feature. But instead of this, uh, although we can have make some approximations, but still uh, because of the limitation of the quantum resources, we need uh, to increase the power of quantum computing to make it feasible to be implemented on a, a quantum computer. So fortunately, we know that many body system has a, a certain structure. So we this enables us to, according to the interaction structure, to design more efficient quantum algorithms specifically targeted at the problem. So here, we, I want to say that, for, for instance, by using the perturbative inspired by the perturbation uh, theory, we can, for instance, to reduce the number of qubits to simulate a large system. So there are some other uh, attempts to quantum body systems, like uh, quantum embedding theories, which trying to divide the uh, large scale problem by a core part and environment part. So the quantum correlations are processed by a classical mean field theory level. So only the core part are processed by a quantum, quantum computer. There are other approaches, like uh, one of the typical approaches, hybrid tensor networks, which trying to represent the quantum correlations by a hybrid quantum classical means. So it can use its fewer quantum resources to represent the uh, original large scale problem. And there are other methods like the circuit cutting. So we can cut the original large circuit to smaller ones by introducing some overhead. So for a generic many body Hamiltonian, we have the local interaction plus the interaction Hamiltonian. And for instance, H1 plus H2. And an example is a clustered uh, molecules, for instance, this one. So the two molecules are coupled by a certain type of interactions. And we know for, for this experiment, uh, people have shown that the this kind of correlation between the two parties can result in a quantum mechanical effect. Uh, a more detailed discussion can be found in this uh, neutral scattering paper. So the, the, the goal is to simulate the dynamics. So one of the Intermediate step is to consider Dyson series. So we can think this is a perturbative approach. And in principle, we can consider a truncated Dyson series, finite order Dyson series. And basically, this gives us a linear combination of unitaries. We can either using a LCU protocol or quantum processing protocol, or just measure it one by one to simulate the original problem uh, by by only applying some local terms here. So this is a, a naive uh, uh, approach, uh, which so the quantum processing quantum signal processing protocol has been discussed in previous papers. And of course, we can uh, using an 
uh, using near term version for that. Basically, we measure each term one by one and using classical method to sum it. But we know that this will result in some algorithmic errors. So alternatively, uh, we can consider the joint evolution by dividing it to be the local interact local operations and interaction uh, interacting terms. So UL is the local term acting on L subsystem, and the, this one jointly acts on different subsystems. So for instance, UL is the evolution e to the minus ih1 and e to the minus ih2t, and this one is the interaction between the two parties. So the question is whether we can realize this joint evolution by applying local operations only. So if we can do so, then this enables us to simulate the full quantum system by applying the local operations. So we don't need a large quantum computer to solve the, uh, the original problem, but instead we convert it to a small scale uh, problem. So by doing so, uh, I first introduced a generalized operation uh, so com comparing to a quantum channel, uh, so for quantum channel, uh, u and v are equi are, are has to be uh, u equals to v, and this reduces to a quantum channel. But here we consider this to be a u and v dagger. So it is different from a uh, quantum channel. But uh, it is not increasing under the Schitter norm, and it reduces quantum channel with u equals to v. And these operations can be implemented by um, in, by introducing an sailor to me to measure the uh, for instance you if you want to measure the real part and, and imaginary part you can just measure on the ancillary qubit on x and y basis. So with such a uh, operation basis, for instance, we can consider a complete basis set, and we can decompose the joint interaction channel into the local basis. Uh, the phi one to the phi l, so l subsystem. So in this sense, the whole evolution will become a, a tensor pro a product of local operations. So uh, this gives one of the picture. Uh, so basically, the original pro the original uh, joint evolution is now expressed by only applying the local operations on the L subsystem, because you see this is all the tensor product. And what does this mean? This means that at certain time, at each time T, delta T, we may either apply, I'm sorry, we first apply a local operation UL, which is e to the minus IHLT, the local part. And then this, then we followed by a composed operation, phi LK. And uh, is so the uh, the, the form of the uh, the file case determined by the interaction term determined by the amplitude of the interaction. So this is can be regarded as a discretized version of a perturbation uh, approach. So we only manipulate the local quantum system, but overall the expectation value of the joint system is a linear combination of the results measured from the local subsystem. So we are using the local subsystem measurement results to recover the original joint, uh, the, the expectation value of the joint system. Okay. Uh, so actually, uh, This so you see for here we need to consider a, a discretized version by considering delta t, but this might be unnecessary. So the reason for that is, uh, I'm sorry. So we can continue a, a continuous version for that because you know that uh, the delta is very small. When delta equals to zero, basically we have nearly no probability to apply the operation. So in this, in, in this sense, the probability will only accumulate to a certain level until when we need to apply an operation to the, to, the, uh, to the phi operation. So we can first determine the probability until when we have to apply such an operation. Then we determine which operation which we will apply, and this will determine by its interaction term. 
like alpha k minus uh, uh, divided by the sum of sum over of, of that summation of that. And this is uh, depicted by such a picture. So we only apply operations on the local subsystem. But finally, we are using the linear combination of the uh, the, the measurement outcome to reproduce the uh, measurement outcome of the uh, joint evolution that's applying on L subsystem. And of course, this introduces a sampling overhead. We we can know we can easily know that overhead will be exponentially in terms of the, the total time evolution time and the total interaction strength. So let's consider a simple example. So the previous one uh, means that we need to find a, find a basis set with decomposed interaction into the basis set. And by doing so, we know the explicit form of alpha k and phi 1k. But you know that uh, in principle, if we decompose a interaction channel to local basis channel, this one may not have to be unitary channel. And uh, we have to introduce some measurement in, in this process, which is not desirable. One of the good thing is we can show only local unitary channel can be uh, used to recover joint operation. So this gives you one of a simple example. So consider a quantum uh, system A and B are connected by ZA tensor ZB, which is a poly operation for simplicity. We can compute the dynamic process by uh, applying the joint operation on the initial state. And then we, found, we find this one is a still a local state because we only apply the HA and HB to the local subsystem. The interaction term is here. And we find this is still a combina linear combination of the separable states and uh, the separable states with local operations. Because still, this one Z A tensor Z B are also tens uh, also the uh, separable states, and the, the local operations on the subsystem A and subsystem B. Uh, so we can implement. The, so the question is how we can implement such a phi one and phi two. So you know that phi one is not a quantum channel because this one here is identity instead of uh, Z A tensor Z B a stagger, but it's identity. So we know that this is a special case of usual V dagger, the generalized quantum operation, just taking the V to be identity or U to be the identity. So we can use such a circuit to measure it. And this means that the first party and the second party share a similar stru circuit structure. And we can measure the following circuit separately to reproduce the joint uh, measurement outcome. So uh, in general, we can consider such an explicit decomposition by using a first order expansion. And we know that v rho are the generalized operation. Uh, I'm sorry, it should be trace of that. But this is one of the component of that. And suppose we have the interaction to be a linear combination of the, like a sum over lambda j of vj. We can reproduce the joint evolution by acting on local subsystem. And the final result uh, can be, in, can be uh, recovered by such a circuit. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, a, a question here is, uh, what is the condition for the explicit decomposition to be optimal? So that is to say whether we can uh, minimize, minimize the simulation cost, the sampling cost for that. So here it gives one of the condition. So what does this condition mean? Uh, if the interaction terms of the subsystem are mutually orthogonal, then it gives the uh, explicit decomposition to be nearly optimal. And it, we know that this means the interaction terms are limited uh, because you, you have to ensure you don't have too many interaction terms. Otherwise, you cannot satisfy, satisfy this condition. And uh, very naturally, we find out 
the decomposition is optimal when the interaction term only has one term. So here I give you some uh, example where the de explicit decomposition is near optimal, is optimal. The first one is xx term plus yy term. So for instance, this is the uh, xx Hamiltonian dynamics. So uh, in this case, this is optimal. And similarly, we have such a, like a fermionic problem. When the form fermion is mapped to the qubit, we have such a structure. And we find this structure also satisfy this condition. One of the examples that doesn't fit such a condition is a long range spin chain, which each spin has interactions with all the other spins. So this condition will not be satisfied. And whether it's optimal is unknown, but at least this doesn't satisfy this condition. So in the paper, we show that if the interaction satisfy this condition, then the explicit expansion has the minimum cost uh, under the all possible decomposition strategies. So this shows advantages over the, you just cut the circuit without considering the, uh, the dynamics pro process. Okay, so uh, some comments are like, uh, we can simulate such a NL qubit system using only N qubit quantum device, and you can measure nonlinear functions such as the purity. So a question is, we have the limitation set up by the, uh, by the cost. So can we, alleviate, can we overcome this limitation? So to minimize this one to be from exponential to polynomial, uh, which is discussed in uh, my another paper. So uh, like uh, this one gives you one of the solution that you consider finite order Dyson series, but you have a large algorithm error instead of a zero error that only caused by the sampling, uh, sampling uh, the uncertainty. The other, uh, so, so this one is we consider a individual system instead of consider a, uh, like a joint evolution, but if we only consider the simulation on a simple, on a individual system, we can overcome such a cost. So how to do that is we, so this one is e to the minus IHT. This is a dynamics process. And we divide it into different new segments. And how we do that is we decompose this one to be a, like we implement such a uh, e to the minus IHX the short time dynamics by the shorter formula and the remainder. So basically uh, you can think V is U as dagger. And uh, we can, for instance, if we consider a first order shorter formula, then we can express this one as a linear combination of unitary. And we know that the cost is determined by mu X. So PI is a probability similar to our perturbation approach and mu x is the cost. So using this approach, we can find the mu x can be reduced to the second order instead of the first order. And with some uh, calculation, we find out this mu is reduced by lambda t square to lambda t over mu, over nu, the segment number. So basically this means mu, the sampling cost, will be a constant when a segment number is, uh, is lambda t squared. So the sampling cost can be controlled in such, a, uh, in such a scenario. So finally, I will give you some of the application for our method. Uh, one of the obvious uh, application is the clustered system. So the two spin clustered are connected by some spin-spin correlation. And we want to find out how such a two clusters build up some entanglement and what is the quantum information propagates from one cluster to the other one. So this figure show the uh, long range interaction between the subsystem is very large. So you know that the correlations are very local. This somehow shows some confinement feature. And we investigate the propagation inside the first cluster and the information to the other cluster. And this one is when the local, so basically this one shows the interaction inside the first cluster and the second cluster are nearly nearest neighbor because we we make the alpha to be very small. So basically this is a uh, nearest neighbor coupling. This one, you can think this is a long range coupling with all the spins are interact to each other. 
So we also study the propagation from the first cluster to the second cluster. So uh, here shows some ex examples. And uh, the circuit structure is like this. So uh, we can use a four qubit system to simulate a eight qubit system. Uh, we investigate the dynamic phase transitions uh, for a AC model. Uh, one of the things that I would to remark is we, this one is implemented on an IBM machine. And we find out because we are using small quantum resources, uh, this is potentially more robust to, to noise because this is less affected by noise. And we find the uh, if you naively using an eight qubit system, the original system, you have a less accurate result because of the noise. And our method is uh, has produces a relatively accurate result compared to a full simulation. So other applications include a clustered system, which I will direct you to the original paper for more discussion. So in summary, we pro provide a hybrid approach to simulate dynamics of large system using smaller quantum devices. And this shows advantages uh, over the other naive decomposition strategy. And the method is only efficient for weak interactions and short time instead of a general system. This is a, like a fundamental limitations because otherwise we can use a small quantum device to simulate a large device without any cost. So that is not possible. And uh, we show that why our method is uh, accurate, uh, this has no algorithmic error instead of uh, sampling error, is that it is equivalent to infinite order Dyson series. And potentially it might be, uh, it is robust because it uses fewer quantum resources. So one of the application, instead of simulating a quantum metabolic system, it can be used as a benchmark for large quantum scale, large scale quantum, quantum devices using a small available quantum devices. So a uh, cost alleviation, if you are only simulate a, 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 a single system, a individual system without any like double the system size, we can we can reduce the quantum cost, reduce the sampling cost from exponential to polynomial. The future work is we can combine more advanced hybrid approach, for instance, the hybrid tensor network to simulate the dynamics. And uh, although in theory it might not be able to recover the accurate result, but it proposes a potential solution. A, a, a feasible approach to simulate a large system dynamics using smaller one. Although I should say that might not guarantee you have an accurate result. Uh, thank you very much. That's uh, all my presentation and feel free to have any questions. Okay, uh, are there any questions? Hi. Um, there, I know that there are these like uh, circuit knitting techniques that sort of do something similar, where you you have like a circuit that's over multiple qubits, and and then if there's a few gated operations between sort of two subsets of qubits, then you can get away with sort of getting rid of those interactions at the cost of some sort of exponential sampling overhead. Um, can you comment on sort of how this work? relates to it or is it like totally different or is it, it seems to be more tailored to sort of material simulation? I don't know, maybe, maybe you could just put those two in context with each other. Hmm. Yeah, so there are some uh, circuit cutting, you mean circuit cutting approach, but in general, if you, so you know that, uh, let me see whether I can uh, write something here. Uh, okay, uh, so, so, the, so basically, the circuit cutting approach, because this is a dynamics process. And if you compile the original like dynamical process into circuit and you just cut the circuit, it will be exponentially large for the sampling cost. This is first shown in, uh, in Peng's uh, uh, PRL paper in 2020. So, it's, it, it, so in, in theory, it has to be exponentially with uh, the total evolution time. And uh, so our method shows 
uh, this kind of the explicit decomposition is optimal compared to the other uh, circuit compiling strategy. So if you first compile the dynamics process to a circuit and you cut the circuit by uh, using a circuit cutting strategy, then it might not have a good resource cost. So I, our method, I see. I see. So it's like, yeah, it's our like... method, yeah, but, but but basically our the, the approach is different. So we consider the interaction. Uh, so basically, you can think this is an infinite order Dyson series. So implement such a thing, and practically, what we are doing is uh, we decompose in we decompose the interaction channel to local channels. Yeah, and this consider a continuous version of that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can Hi. you also compare your uh, use of the infinite order Dyson series to the simulation in the interaction picture where you uh, truncate Dyson series? No. Uh, so this method is equivalent to uh, infinite order Dyson series. So in in theory, it just reproduces this one. Uh, let me see whether I have the uh, the slides for that. Uh, so a finite order Dyson series basically you have some truncation, like uh, here you have some truncation. Uh, but our method, oh, maybe I delete that one. So the the idea is. Uh, we consider a continuous version of that, and this each of the uh, decomposition is by, by by decomposing this interaction channel by by such a formula, and we show the equivalence to infinite order Dyson series without any truncation, because this one when delta t equals to zero, there's no there's no uh, algorithmic error error, and by expanding this one. So the, the proof idea is by expanding this term, uh, and you will find you will immediately find out the, uh, the correspondence to infinite order Dyson series yeah, just by expanding this term. Okay, is there one more question? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker and all the speakers from this session again. Thank you.